Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Steve from graphicdesignertips.com. Welcome to another episode of Logo Design Bootcamp. In today's episode number six, I'm gonna teach you how to design a logo based on the letter F. Now, if you're new to Logo Design Bootcamp, every week we choose another letter of the alphabet, we design a fictitious logo for you to learn from, I critique it, and then I actually show you how to build it in Adobe Illustrator. And each tutorial has different skills and tools that you're gonna use throughout Illustrator to make you a better artist in the end. All right, so today I was at the mall doing holiday shopping. I got my little candy cane tie. I've actually had this for a while. I bought a new one today. I love holiday ties. I love the holidays, decorating and all that good stuff. Uh, I actually took a photo with Santa today. This is a photo of uh, my wife and I with her little six month pregnant belly. And it actually says a little tag on it. It says, do not open until April 3rd, 2013. So I'm pumped about that. But um, my real inspiration came from being at the mall and going to stores, looking at products, the logos, and you know the artwork behind like the advertisements. And uh, the, the unique thing about specific types of logos, which is the one I'm gonna show you in a second, is when a symbol to a logo can actually be incorporated into the words where it takes up the letters and the letters are removed, but you can still read the words. And um, that's the logo I have for you today. It's called Freedom Financial. And if you're wondering how we jump from the holidays to financial, uh, it's because my pockets are empty right now. And uh, I just started thinking about how crazy the holidays are and how much, you know, how much gifts cost and how many gifts you got to get and, and how it all adds up. So um, aside from the other logos I've done in the other tutorials that were a lot more fun, this is a more serious type of uh, corporate type of professional look. So I figured why not throw my tie back on for this tutorial. As you can see, this logo, the symbol to this logo actually cuts through both of the words and uh, it takes out the O in the top word and it takes out the I in the bottom word financial. And the cool thing about this is even when you take that logo away later on and it's standalone, just like it is now, it's, it's still the symbol of the company. Um, you can incorporate it into the word. You can even re actually fill the word later and put the O in the actual I font back in and leave this, the symbol on top, the left, the right, wherever it needs to be. It's, uh, it's just really cool when you can see a logo incorporated and it, like I said, it cuts out the letters and it, it still says the word. You can still read it. So uh, let's get into it. Let me critique this for you. This logo consists of two main fonts. Uh, we're using a Futura Bold for the word freedom, and for the word financial, we're using Times New Roman. So these are all basic fonts that everybody should have. Uh, most computers should have Futura on it, hopefully. Uh, if not, you can go download it on the internet for free and uh, use that. The tagline is actually Myriad. Um, for whatever reason, I threw in a, a third font. I should have probably used a light version of Futura because once you start going over two fonts and anything, it's uh, it starts to get a little bit messy. So um, we got the thick font up here. It's the it's a big word freedom. That's the name of the company. And financial doesn't have to be as prominent as it. Um, so that's why I left it uh, smaller. And I actually um, did tracking between these letters. So I'll show you that when I build it. But the, um, the O is actually taken out by the top of the tree and the bark comes down and it, it fills that area where the I would have been and you can still read it, which is the cool part. Um, to compensate for this little area over here, um, because of the tracking between each letter, it, obviously the L is gonna end up right here. So I extended the M down because it gives a little bit of a you know characteristic to it uh, and, and it changes it all up a little bit. It, it adds, adds to it. So let's jump into Illustrator right now and uh, we'll build this bad boy real quick. Okay, so we're in Illustrator Adobe CS6 right now and the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go to the type tool and we're gonna type in the word freedom with caps on. And I'm going to change the font and find my Futura bold. And I'm gonna hit escape because now it's gonna get me out of that selection. And I'm going to take the arrow while holding shift. If you don't hold shift, this is what's gonna happen. Hold shift and it's not gonna distort at all. All right, that's the word freedom. I am going to um, actually bring, um, come to my character palette and I'm gonna come to my tracking. It's at 100 right now. It, should be defaulted to zero, but I was doing some things in here right before the tutorial, so it, it left off with what I last did. Um, I am now going to take the type tool again and type the word financial 
scroll in caps. I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to increase the size of that. And I'm just going to kind of eye this up with my eyes. And I'm going to come up here and, and type in times and times new Roman. Actually, did I use times new Roman? I think so. All right. Well, times or times new Roman don't matter. Uh, I am going to make this smaller by, and also hold the shift so it doesn't scale it and come to character and I'm going to add tracking in here. And what tracking does is it sets the track, all right, set, set the tracking for the selected characters. Tracking is going to add space before the letters, af after the letters. So if you see, it's actually spacing out the letters as we speak or as I speak. All right, so I got my tracking up to like 616. My numbers are going to be completely different to yours based on how zoomed in you are to your canvas. Um, or, you know, how, yeah, exactly, how zoomed in you are. Because right now this is 31 points in uh, the, the size of the word. You might be looking at a 12-point word. <clears throat> so now we got freedom and financial. Now we need to, uh, we need to, Come into here real quick, and um, we're gonna have to make sure that the O and the I eventually meet up. So later on, we're gonna have to change the tracking. And uh, in this case, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna make this smaller because we're gonna have to extend that M. I forgot about that. Um, so we're pretty much setting ourselves up for what we need to do. And I'm gonna select both of these, come to the Type tool, and go to Create Outlines or Shift Command -Z uh, O. All right, now we have outlines on our words. I am going to select them and I'm going to uh, fill the color by coming to the eyedropper or hitting the letter I on the keyboard and selecting my little eyedropper I've had ready to go over here. And I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna hit the V key to get my uh, regular selection tool. I'm gonna hit I again for the eyedropper and I'm gonna select my other gradient. So now we got our green and our brown. And I am going to take my direct selection, which is up here, and hit the letter A. And now that these are outlined, I can directly select them. That's what the direct. That's why it's called a direct selection. Select them just like so, and I'm gonna hit delete. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're going to create this little, um, we're gonna create this little shape real quick. Let me just move this over here so I can kinda uh, do this and we're gonna start with the moon on the top the way that the moon is done is very simple you make an ellipse and you hold option click and it's gonna copy it and you just move it over and you want to lay it on top just a little bit to the left and you're gonna select both come over here to your pathfinder minus the front boom there we got our little moon and I'm just going to delete that because we have it right here. Um, these shapes were, if you actually notice, one thing I haven't even mentioned yet, which is funny, but um, the tree is actually made up of the Fs on each side, the financial, uh, financial, freedom financial. So uh, that's where my logo started. It kind of evolved into a, a tree. It kind of actually started like this over here. So um, that's what we pretty much came up with in the end. So the way that that is done is you're gonna start with an ellipse and you basically, all you need to really do is you need to just, um, you need to draw that shape. And the way that you do it, and we're gonna do it kind of quick right here. I'm gonna take that out of there, the fill. Um, I'm just doing this by eye right now. We'll come to the middle, and then we're gonna come out here. And if anybody's wondering how I came up with the concept, don't ask me. <laughs> it's uh, it's something that kind of just came together um, after a little bit of, of playing around. And, uh, you know, sometimes logos can be frustrating if they're not going in the direction you want. But, uh, you know, eventually you get to it. So I am going to fill this with, with white. And let's look how funky this thing looks. Probably doesn't look anything like it. It looks horrible. But um, if you spend... <laughs> <laughs> if you spend more time on this, uh, you know you, you'll get you'll you'll get the exact shape you want. So um, 
I'm just kind of rushing through here. So we're going to keep this shape and we're going to work with it. Why not? And we're going, I'm going to select both of these. I'm going to minus the front and now it's, it's kind of that open shape. And what I did here on the top was kind of funky. Um, cause I wanted the moon to be like cutting out of the tree. I don't know. So there was a point in the middle right here. I, with my direct selection, I pulled it down to make that little dip. And now let's copy our moon over here so you see that. And then just drew this little shape over here. And the way that I did this shape over here, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, you're going to come make a rectangle, a long rectangle. You're going to come to your pen tool or hit the letter P on your keyboard. And actually, you want to hit the plus sign, excuse me, because it's going to be the add a point tool. And you're going to add a point there. And we're going to add a point down here on the bottom left, come on, and one on the bottom right. And now we're gonna take our direct selection and we're gonna augment uh, two, three points on this. We're gonna take this one and we're gonna pull it down. And remember, you hold shift, because if you don't, you start going like this. I hold shift and we're gonna come here. And, and instead of actually pulling it, I'm gonna select the point and I'm gonna nudge it by hitting the arrow one, two, three times. I'm going to select that and then go to the left one, two, three times. In this tool over here, this is one of my favorite tools, the Convert Anchor Point tool, which is Shift C. And we're going to click on this point. It's going to actually round the corner. And we're going to round this corner too. And we can also change the angle and the, uh, the curve by getting the direct selection, clicking on that point and moving this up and then just pulling the anchor over here and, and readjusting that, which is pretty cool. So that's how you make that tree shape. So let's back up a little bit by hitting Command Z. Well, don't you do it, but I'm gonna do it. And now I'm back to my logo. I am going to take this logo and throw it here. And already you see things aren't lining up. So we're going to, we're going to shift this down a little bit. And I'm gonna extend the tree in this case because because, um, well, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make my word higher. And I'm probably going to extend that tree just a bit to make that line underneath it. All right. I mean, this is balance and this is this takes a while. So, you know, what I came up with in the end was after going through multiple versions of, of changing things around. So we're going to come to the line tool, line segment tool, and we're going to make a line right here. That spans the left and the right. We're going to fill it with this brown little color that I have right here. We're going to zoom in and I'm just going to move this back up to there. And oh, I forgot to make that that leg longer on the M. And the way that you do that is you do the direct selection because now it's outlined. So I can do whatever I want with this. And I'm just going to pull this down to the bottom of the L. And you're going to notice that the L is kind of hitting. Now this is in this is a part of design where you can start to fudge things a little bit. And I'm going to take this L and click it with the direct selection right in the middle. Do not click an endpoint. If you click a point, that's going to happen. Click it right in the middle and just move it on over. And you can even do the same thing to the A. Move that just a little bit over, and you're never going to really notice that that the kerning is, uh, excuse me, the tracking is off between the letters. So the last thing is, is same thing. You do a text box. I'm just going to copy this one over. Your little company tagline goes here. And that is it on how you build the Freedom Financial logo. In wrapping up episode number six, I hope you enjoyed the logo. I hope you learned from it. I hope you learned that Although a logo may be incorporated into a logo, you can always use that logo separately later and uh, you know you still utilize the words. Um, but just keep your eye open you know the next time you're out at a store products on the internet um, and you see this happening and, and then you go, wow, I remember that happening from the video. And it's, it's just getting that design sense and seeing things and you know recognizing them. So then when you get to do work for your clients, you know, you'll have a better understanding and it'll help you. It's going to help you because it's going to be in your memory. So um, another thing is that I would say, I would say personally over 50% of the logos that I design are more clean, professional looking logos than more fun, bubbly, crazy logos. So uh, a lot of the businesses call for clean design nowadays, a more modernized, uh, you know, so 
if you like what you see here, uh, I do this every week and subscribe to our channel by hitting the subscribe button right here. You got to click it and you'll be able to subscribe to our channel. Also follow us on our social networks, Twitter and Facebook and any comments, definitely leave them below. If you felt this video helped you out a little bit, definitely hit the like button. It helps us get out there more. And that's it. I'm Steve Looney from graphicdesignertips.com. Love you. Have a good night. Have an awesome holiday. Uh, although I'll see you before then. So take care. Peace.